And the Aussies and Americans were allies during the Second World War, right? Well, yeah, but you wouldn't think so if you were in the streets of Brisbane, Australia in late 1942. Since American military personnel had been operating out of Australia in the wake of Pearl Harbor, tensions had been high, and on the 26th and 27th, a tiny war broke out. This is the story of the infamous Battle of Brisbane. After the Japanese poked the hornet's nest, the Americans needed places to operate out of in the Pacific War. Australia's east coast became one of them, with American troops concentrating in Brisbane, Sydney and Melbourne. All in all, over a million Americans were stationed in the land down under between December 1941 and 1945. To put it in perspective, Brisbane's late 1941 population was about 330,000. With the influx of Americans, this number increased, at peak, by 80,000 during the war. Most of these Americans were men, and as you can imagine, this had a profound effect on the local population. It wasn't just American GIs running amok though. With them came American MPs, generally disliked by even their own countrymen, and the Americans took over Australian buildings too, turning them into things like postal exchanges and Red Cross service clubs. It probably would have been alright if that was the only territory the Americans encroached upon. To cater for the Americans, Brisbane changed. American flags were strung up, their anthem played in the theatres, the cafes sold coke, hot dog stands appeared on the streets, and people even started talking, dressing, and dancing differently. And why not cater to them? They were the ones with the money and the fancy uniforms. According to an article published by the Australian War Memorial, American soldiers earned at least twice as much as their Aussie counterparts and, with their custom of tipping, were seen as big spenders. On top of this, American postal exchanges sold expensive American goods that the Aussies couldn't afford or straight up couldn't get their hands on. We're talking things like fine meats, chocolate, ice cream, silk and nylon stockings, ciggies and piss. And that last one was an especially sore point because the bars were only open twice a day for an hour, forcing the locals to go on city-wide pub crawls if they wanted to get trolleyed. Now, maybe the Aussies could have lived with that. That is, if the Yanks hadn't been raking all of their women in two. Many Australian women fell head over heels for the American men. In the words of authors Peter Thompson and Robert Macklin in their book, The Battle of Brisbane, Many Brisbane girls loved their jive talk and wanted to learn jitterbugging steps like the jersey bounce and the jig walk, eat hamburgers and drink milkshakes. They went to coffee inns, ate hot dogs and dreamed of a glamorous life in California. Australian artist Donald Friend was in Brisbane at the time. He painted more of an R-rated picture. The girls' faces were expressionless, mesmerized, their shallow eyes glazed, thin lips which seemed to express at the same time the softness of childhood and the viciousness of accomplished whoredom. They seemed drugged, while their bodies, bed-racked, easy, pulsed erotic contortions to the rhythm. A common saying at the time was that there were three things wrong with the Americans. They're overpaid, oversexed, and over here. And another thing, the Aussies hated PDAs too, meaning public displays of affection, which is bloody fair enough. All of these factors compounded to make some seriously unhappy locals, and from June 1942 to October 1942, the number of arrests among military personnel increased from 140 to 1,128. By late October, the city was a perpetual brawl, averaging 20 broken up fights each night in South Brisbane alone. There were knife and gun fights and in which both Australians and Americans were wounded and killed, albeit only on a relatively small scale. Down in Melbourne, an American soldier named Eddie Linowski, the brownout strangler, murdered three Australian women with his bare hands. This was more because he was a complete psycho than anything else, but still, it couldn't have been good for the Australian-American relations. On the night of the 26th of November, the day of the American holiday Thanksgiving no less, the tension built to a bloody crescendo. It all started when one American private, blind drunk, left the hotel he'd been sinking beers at. On his way to a postal exchange on the corner of Creek Street and Adelaide Street, he bumped into some Aussies and stopped for a bit of a yarn. 
Funnily enough, things went from chill to hectic when an American MP of the 815th Military Police Company approached the private and asked to see his leave pass. The wasted private took his sweet time getting out his pass, so the MP arrested him. The Aussies liked the private enough to kick up a bit of a fuss about it, swearing at the MP and telling him to leave the American private alone. The MP raised his baton and things hit the fan. The Aussies jumped him and the MP blew his whistle for help. It came, but so did a horde of pissed off Australians. When the MP's buddies carried his battered self to the relative safety of the postal exchange, a crowd of Australian military personnel and civilians started throwing rocks at and bottling the building. They also besieged the nearby Red Cross building and things spiralled out of control from there. Within about an hour of the initial incident, some 5,000 people were rioting in the streets of Brisbane, including some Australian MPs who had removed their armbands to join the fight. The American MPs took up shotguns and prepared for the worst. In the chaos, one of them jabbed an Australian soldier with the barrel of his gun and the soldier's mates jumped on the MP. The shotgun went off three times, with one shot hitting an Aussie soldier in the chest and ending his life. Others were wounded with buckshot pellets in the scuffle. According to Australian war correspondent John Hind, the most furious battle I ever saw during the war was that night in Brisbane. It was like a civil war. Obviously, Hind hadn't reported on the Eastern Front. The riot dispersed at around 10pm that night, but the blowout had, evidently, been insufficient. The following night, the 27th of November 1942, a mob of around 500 to 600 Australian military personnel returned to the area and started causing trouble. In nearby Queen Street, a group of Aussies armed with batons attacked some 20 American MPs brandishing pistols. It might have ended with some serious bloodshed if an Australian officer hadn't convinced the American MPs to vacate the area. Australian officers also confiscated a number of grenades from their men. The mob then moved down the street to American General Douglas MacArthur's HQ and started swearing at the building and getting into fistfights with any American men they caught sight of. American Army Sergeant Bill Benson described the battle like this. There'd be a circle, and in the circle would be a yank or two, and they were being kicked and hit any way the Aussies could do it. They were grabbing them by their arms and legs and throwing them up in the air to get them in the intersection. It went on for about an hour or two. All in all, the Battle of Brisbane resulted in just one death, Australian gunner Edward S. Webster, who was shot in the chest. The man who shot him got off on the grounds of self-defense. It's unclear how many people were wounded, but the figure is in the hundreds, with injuries ranging from black eyes and broken noses to fractured skulls and gunshot wounds. Five Aussies were convicted for assault, but only one was jailed, and only for six months. A lot of people were very sore and hung over the next day, and while it didn't go away, the violence never reached a crescendo like that ever again. The aforementioned Sergeant Benson was surprised with the Aussies' attitude following the battle. In his words, it sort of settled down and you go into a pub and an Aussie would come up and slap me on the back. Oh, wasn't that a good ruckus we had the other night? Have a beer on me. The entire affair was suppressed by the media in an effort to maintain Australian-American relations during the real war. We'd love to know what you think though. Had you heard of the Battle of Brisbane before today? Do you know anything about it that we didn't cover in this video? What about other similar occurrences during the Second World War? Let us know all that and more in the comment section below. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope you learned something new.